Nick DePaul here from ESPN, joined by Tinker Hatfield, the legendary Air Jordan designer, of course. And Tinker, you know, we've heard Phil Knight in the past say that Air Jordan 3 was the shoe that saved Nike. What can you tell me about the very first time you remember presenting that shoe to Michael? At the time there was talks, you know, he might even be looking at leaving the brand and, and just how that kind of all came together. Well, there's a great story around that, which is uh, Michael really did want to leave us at the time. And without getting too complicated, you know, he was not in a great mood. Phil Knight was in the room. Uh, Michael came in after keeping us waiting for four hours, and I was uh, really uh, kind of on the spot to present him the, the Air Jordan 3, which he hadn't seen yet. So Phil Knight was there, he's, and he, uh, he welcomed Michael into the room, said, I'm glad you finally made it. And it was almost like he was, I don't know if he really knew what else to say. He just said, all right, Tinker, take it over here. And so I, so I presented. And uh, it was kind of fun because he, he was like in a bad mood. And then 20 minutes later, he had the shoe in his hands. And, the, and his love of design and his love of the process that we actually had gone through, you know, it was, was the meetings. It all came back to him. And, and he, I, I think you know, that, was, that was a turning point. Let's just put it that way. And uh, I love it that Phil Knight thinks I saved Nike. Um, and I, I actually asked Michael a few years later, I said, is that really why you stayed? And he goes, well, that's part of it. He said, also, my dad really read, read me the riot act in the parking lot afterward because he said, don't you ever disrespect Mr. Knight that way anymore. And uh, his dad gave him some good advice about staying with Nike rather than leaving. And I, after, he t after uh, Michael told me that story, I said, dude, do not repeat that to Mr. Knight because he thinks I really am the guy that's safe. <laughs> and here I am on TV, you know, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's all water under the bridge. No, that's great. And of course, shortly after the launch of the three was the 88 dunk contest and the all-star game. What was it like for you just to see your shoe on that stage, on that moment? And what do you remember about that dunk contest? Well, like everybody else, I mean, our jaws all just dropped. And, uh, and you know, what we knew that he, you know, he was capable of amazing things, but that was, uh, that was really a special moment. And uh, I have photographs of that, of him flying through the air with those shoes on. And um, so I, I, I just, I was emotionally attached to the, um, not just the shoe, but to Michael. And of course, this amazing uh, ability that he had to not only play basketball, but to just be athletic and also just be a great guy. So it's fun all the way around. That's awesome. And more recently, of course, we saw the Air Jordan 3, not in basketball, but in football, take the grand stage of the Super Bowl through the Justin Timberlake performance. What was it like seeing that shoe come to life? And what was that process working with Timberlake like? Oh, yeah, I was, uh, I was in the room uh, back at the Michael Jordan building on the Nike campus when uh, Justin Timberlake came. And uh, it was really, really fun. I've met him a time or two before. But really, we hadn't really drummed up anything. And uh, it was fun because he got to look at all different kinds of shoes that he could have chosen or been part of collaborating on with, in regard to the Super Bowl performance. But he saw that. Once that shoe came in the room, it was over. You know, he just said, that's it. That's the one. And everybody, you know, got excited. So, And of course, right now it's... And of course, right now it's the 30th anniversary of the Air Jordan 3. We've seen the 30th anniversary be celebrated by the brand a lot recently with the 31 and the 1, 32 and the 2. Now that the brand is coming up into the 33 and really all the era of Jordans you designed, how are you looking to get re-engaged with the process of the Air Jordan? And are you going to be kind of reinserting yourself into that design process? Well, I, will tell, I will tell you that um, I, I don't like to sort of like rehash the way things have always been done. So um, I don't work on, I'm not working on the 33. And in fact, um, you know, even though that's an important product for us, uh, you know, we have, I, I've done a number of shoes with Michael. I'm kind of interested in, uh, in changing up how, how we get inspired and who we talk to and how we kind of go forward. So I'm, I'm kind of like on the fringe of the business looking at different ways to do it. While, while we have very uh, hugely creative people working on the 33, um, so I'm kind of like, keeping my distance because I think uh, other people need to need to need the opportunity to show their creative uh, abilities in concert with Michael just like I had a chance to but I'm doing it differently I'm, I'm, I'm like um, working kind of uh, like in a little bit different orbit